effective? Is it not effective? Um, I think there needs to be more investigation. Um, I think that's being done right now. <clears throat> In fact, this was maybe the third part of an investigation that's been going on that, <clears throat> excuse me, earlier found that um, some uh, uh, navigators were actually encouraging people to under, uh, under report their, their income to mm. change the fees, see. Mm. So I think we have a, a, a big thing going on here that uh, uh, we may be just scratching the surface from the way ex they're explaining it. It's a little bigger thing than I think we even see here. Mm. So we're going to find out in time, and uh, um, only time will tell then. Well, I did, uh, I did contact uh, CC Israel's campaign to find out if they <coughs> want to make a statement. Uh, can I have back? In a minute. Oh, well, I'll have to tell you about it later. It, 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 really, it, really would be, it really would be nice if they came forward and said something about this video. They actually came forward and said something, period, because the people, people need answers. And she's looking at running for state representative, you know, to be the voice of the people. She yeah. needs to come forward and say, well, hey, I'm against this or, you know, this is wrong and this, you know, this does not happen. This was not part of my campaign. And the fact that she has not come forward and said anything, well, that is a I, shame. I, I, and I that talked with Justin Perez, her campaign manager, I uh, emailed. He says, Chris Tarango had no affiliation with our campaign, so we have no uh, comment to give. I would have thought that if they were helping your opponent, you might have had something to say about it. Because right. he, he obviously mentioned you, Rico Rios. You're looking to run for state representative. You need to come forward and answer to the people. Like your constituents want to know, you know, what your involvement was and what you have to say for this. We want to hear from your mouth and not one of your employees. Maybe she don't want to say nothing because these people are not going to be helping her. Well, I, I, I think in this position. Well, how do you like politics now? Well, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Is it as fun as you thought it'd be? It's quite interesting. It's quite an adventure. I didn't think it would go quite like this. I, I mean, uh, getting a battleground, no text. Yeah, yeah, you got a November getting surprise, it. didn't you? You didn't think we'd get a November <laughs> surprise. <laughs> it was started out on the Drudge Report. Then it was on Hannity. Then it was on Fox News. Scandal. Yes. So it's, it's making the rounds. Oh, my. And, Scandal. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. And uh, it could be quite upsetting. Uh, I think someone needs to go to jail. The, this it's not going to happen. These people have been getting away with this for how long? They need to go to jail. We need, to, we need some federal charges brought. Good luck. I think it's important in this position that we represent the people. Um, this type of thing doesn't represent the people. It uh, creates an imbalance, uh, especially uh, Rule 17. That's going to be a new buzzword. Oh, I yeah. Think Did we play Rule 17? Rule 17, that. it's uh, whatever bleep it takes. All right. I won't say what the bleep is, but uh, it was said over and over in this. That's they part used the F word a lot. That's why come we didn't see Rule 17. That was in there, but anyway. And what is uh, Rule 17? Rule 17. Uh, rule 17. The rules. guy says Rule 17 is we will do whatever the B for F. You know. No, he said I saw that. Did yeah. you see that? Yeah, I was on I there. Saw that. It's, oh, it kind of zipped through there, yeah, it, but this is. There are no rules. Is what Rule 17 is. Okay. I think it was the rules for Battleground Texas. Yeah, there are no rules. One of the rules. So they're going to break the federal law and communicate there between, are no rules. between organizations that are not supposed to talk with each there other. There are no rules. Wow, interesting. I guess. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> we have some emotion here, don't we? Um, that's part of. Uh, again, look, my part of this race. We're all quiet here, aren't we? Um, we need relief. We need relief. This is just an example of another thing that's going on with government at this point. It's gotten out of control. We need relief on taxes. All right. We're having uh, excessive taxes going on, so we need relief there. About what that. about relief on uh, obstructive uh, <coughs> regulations? <coughs> we need relief on that. Uh, we re need relief on, uh, from intrusion into our personal lives and freedoms. Mm. All right. Um, we need relief from Obamacare, and we can go. I'm, I'm a chiropractor. I, I, I look at this day in and day out. Okay, we got a problem with the computer right now, with that, uh, that working. Uh, I was listening to a uh, navigator go over explanation of it, and it kind of went like this: two plus two is four, unless it's six or five. It could be three. <laughs> this is how it goes. So how do you get a com computer that's digital? That's you know, yes and no, you know, uh, how do you get something to uh, compute that way? You, that's why they're having problems. The other end of it is, you haven't heard this yet. Well, they're having trouble enrolling people. How are you going to pay the doctors that treat those patients? That program's even worse. 
Forty percent, that's not even written yet. If Go ahead. you're elected as a state rep uh, in Travis County, how would you handle the double taxation of health care when we have a central health district and we'll have Obamacare? Well, he should, for one, he should hire my staff because we can process more people on my well, website than he can. But, they can on on Obamacare's website. Central <laughs> health district, yeah, that's a state issue. <laughs> and it will have Obamacare covering the same expenses. Well, um, any ideas? Yes, because I think Obamacare is going to go away. That's my prediction. Okay. I can't see how they can fix it. I, I have so many people come to me and say, well, you're a representative. You can't do anything about the Obamacare anyway. That's well, what I was just thinking uh, at a state well, level. There's a few things. Abbott's had some lawsuits and things of that nature going on. Maybe not a legislative thing, but um, maybe that could be changed to have some block grants given to the states mm -hmm. to then fund the uh, health care. Mm -hmm. Because then we have 50 experiments going on once again, which I'm a big advocate of. Mm -hmm. Because anytime you centralize anything, we have issues because we have all winners and all losers, and that's devastating to the community. If we have a state that maybe puts together a health care program that doesn't work too well, well, they lose. But they're going to change because they're going to see, why are people moving to Texas? That's an experiment that works economically. And some of the best social programs I've ever seen are a job. How does Obamacare affect power pressure? Uh, well, we don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know because, because it right changes now, daily. It's only accessible. It does. It's pretty much like a private uh, funding or, or... There's a piece in the bill that says they are going to cover non-medical doctors, in other words, other yeah. doctors the reason on I'm an equal basis, that but that that's, there's yeah. a bill now to get rid of that. Well, well the reason I'm asking is because, well, from what y'all charge, yeah. because I don't recall as a MAP person being told, you can go to this chiropractor and we'll pay mean. for it. You know, under, a map, map? under MAP, the central health okay. district, you get services paid for, dental, you know, this, this, and that. But I've never seen listed chiropractor services under the menu of costs. Or, or huh. mm -hmm. I can't say I've even looked at it, so I wouldn't have no idea. Mm -hmm. That is interesting. So you know, most how, how would we yeah, handle well, the central health care district compared to Obama? Again, I'm, I'm not representing. Uh, I am representing chiropractors. I'm representing medical doctors. I'm rep representing Democrats, libertarians. I'm representing everybody. If I Get elected. Get this, get well, elected. Let, let me put it this way. Most of your clients are uh, insurance or things like that. Most of mine? Yeah. A percentage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have, we have a percentage that's cash. We have a percentage yeah. it's, it, it's a mix because I think that's the healthiest thing. I think one of the best things uh, for health care are uh, uh, medical savings plans. Yeah. Is one of the best things. See, we're trying to make everybody fit the same no, yeah. Well, the only chiropractor the I know that's always been uh, uh, kind of like a home name card is Carl Hall. Right? Carl Hall? <laughs> the chiropractor. We watch the TV here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he had one of the bigger right. uh, groups around, multiple offices. Uh, yeah. That was kind of catchy, good wasn't it? Business, uh, that's gonna catch a you. good business. It's model. just like that old business saying of Willie if you don't have money, you don't need just whatever. What was it? Uh, you just don't uh, just need a little bit of money, something like that. Oh, oh that, yeah, that was uh, yeah, Willie. With, uh, yeah, Willie. Um, furniture what, guy. Yeah. Oh, well, appliances. Appliances. He just passed away some yeah, years ago. Yeah, we're, yeah, yeah. Another good, another good business model. So you don't he need was the money. First one you to just do a little need bit of time, a little so. bit of money, yeah. or something like that. Yeah, and that worked. But it's, you know, stick in your head, make sure you oh, yeah. buy new cats. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so. How are we going to turn that around to a state? Well, we, well, but we also you will also have you know one of the biggest issues was transportation funding this last session. Mm -hmm. What's your position, or have you really well, looked at that yeah, issue one, in one general? Yeah, one of the things that about transportation is, um, matter of fact, we, they had a special session just on that. All these toll roads, you know, mm -hmm. are uh, there's some issues with toll roads. Um, that allows us your to people. build roads quickly. My people, yeah, blame me all the time. Yeah. So I, I think there's a place for toll roads. We don't want to get out of hand. We don't want to uh, create toll roads on roads that have already been built. I think that's foolish. Um, one of the things, there's a, uh, the way roads are being built or have been built in the past is they, they uh, d build it, design, I, I know there's some terms there. Well, um, there's a few roads that they allow that you can skip the bid part of it, okay? 
So that way they're saving 20% on, on uh, building costs of highways. Now you don't want all of them like that because you gotta maintain competition. <coughs> but, um, that allows for, I mean, 20%, that's a lot of money. That's another road somewhere. That's, uh, I was told the other candidate in the race um, suggested that we make 35 <coughs> a toll road and then open up the Excuse actual me? toll road and, and make that free. Well, I had three things to point out here real quick. One of them is uh, uh, the commercial vehicles. Since I come from dump trucks, you got to find some way to get these trucks on that road without robbing them. Right, because you're, you're double taxing them because mm -hmm. they're paying they're paying road usage tax. And then this, every time they go under one of those things, it's a buck and a half per axle. When you got a couple axles behind you, it starts to get expensive. Right. Do you see any trucks on 130? No. No, they don't. I have a cousin that uh, drives truck through here uh, from Michigan, and um, you get on 35. He says we don't. Like we just get on 35. They said 130 is too costly. It's right. cheaper to actually take 35 right. slowly. Right. So well, until they change those. Uh, um, and part, uh, of, part of, well, real quick, part of one of those things you're talking about, I can recall a U.S. 183 North from 35 on up, you know, it used to not be a freeway. And this is one of the, it was a contract that they, they got contracts to build a section at, at a time. Mm -hmm. And this took forever, and it yeah. was a bad house. Uh, but what, what you're talking about is that you can just get all the money at one time and knock it out quick. Mm -hmm. Which I like, if I, if I, if I heard you correctly. Mm -hmm. That would, how would we get that done on a, and then on these toll roads, if we finish paying for them, are they going to be free? Mm. No, they keep paying for them. No, it's well, you got to keep things up, too. Well, um, yeah, it, I heard don't them say they maintenance. also use it as a tool to uh, recoup or get maintenance funds? Yeah, yeah. From but they won't lower uh, the price. Well, what, 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 this last legislature, they did get some more money for roads, and now they need to get some more. They're talking about they need another... They probably need seven billion, four billion to seven billion in that range. We only got maybe one or two, didn't we? So I forget the exact number, but that's the direction to take on that. Well, well uh, from my dump truck, I yeah. do understand that these roads really are paved with gold. Literally, <laughs> you know how much it, it'll do to redo uh, uh, a quarter mile of Interstate 35 here in town, yeah. especially if you have to go within the uh, existing <coughs> right of way. Yeah. It's paved with gold, literally. Mm. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Well, it's a good thing we have a rainy day fund. You know, maybe we'll be able to, you know, fix some of those. I things. don't understand the rainy day fund, but maybe he can tell us about it. Did they? Didn't they use some of it for something? They used some for of it to fund. Ed well, go ahead. Well, um, the rainy day fund's being filled quickly because of the oil boom here, so it's getting replenished quickly mm -hmm. and filled. So they took a piece of that for uh, um, they put uh, was it six billion? I believe it was six billion. They put it aside for um, entities to uh, utilize to get some water conservation and development and then use that and then when they get that started then do set up bonds that then pay it back so it would be a revolving fee so it doesn't all go away but mm. it's it, but it's a starting fund uh, sort of seed money to get this sort of thing started and that's something we definitely need today we didn't look like we had a drought but we still do now, yeah. your, now, your opponent feels that um, we should have a state income tax. What are your thoughts on that? She does? Yes. Mm -hmm. I that didn't do my homework, did I? <laughs> <laughs> that was brought out several times because I've watched some of the forums yes, that, that they're on. They and that we and should that's have something that she did not walk away from. So, um, and there were some battle, battles going on uh, right. uh, in the campaign about that. But, um, well, I hate to talk I, about I was it. Just talk, here. I was just thinking that. That's okay. No, I'll but, take care of that for you. No, but. <laughs> <laughs> but income taxes as an issue yeah what is your position on that well i think i've already said that and that yeah. was no more new taxes we need relief from tax okay. right so i think we have some uh um we were talking about uh zero based uh budgeting in the legislature Keep Start dreaming. The beginning. Uh, it's happened. Things. It's uh, happened. Well, but I we mean, got we, more to go we, yet. We, 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 we have tried a, that at the county, and it was like cussing the whole budget process. I mean, we have a rainy day fund. We have funds here in Texas. There's no reason in the world for a state income oh. tax. No reason in the world. W well, let me ask you this. Um, a lot of people have complained about the way appraisals are done in Texas, mm -hmm. where the homeowner is the one that bur gets a full burden of property taxes. Uh, any ideas of uh, relief on that? Because There's a proposal that uh, maybe they do that every three years versus every year. Because every year, prices do go up oh. and down some. So if we did it every three years, it would save money on the people that are appraising. Mm -hmm. Okay, that slows some of that down. 
Uh, also, it gives a little relief for people can make a, a, a judgment. I, I remember buying a property and the next day, or that next year, my taxes doubled. Mm. You know, uh, commercial and or? Then it, no, it was, oh, yeah. it was a house, and, and we just had we had to uh, you know we got it back down again, but it was a struggle. Let me ask you: If you were to win, what would be your let's say top three issues that you would try to legislate or write a bill on a law to pass? Uh, let's say that I'm I'll put on my former chief of staff hat here, and I'm asking you as the elected official, what do you want me to work on? What are you going to work on if you're elected? I'm so glad you asked that because that's important. Yes. Uh, you know, people want to know, you know the voters want to know uh, once you're elected uh, what is it that, that you're going to give priority to number one um, when I listen to candidates you know in my campaign in the campaign that I was privy to yes, sir. Mm -hmm. is one person says I'm for education okay. and then the next person says I'm even more for education and the person the next person says I'm even more for education they haven't said anything all they say is we want more money and spend it on a failed system. All right. So just like zero-based mm -hmm. budgeting, I think we need <coughs> some effective education before we spend more money. And the same thing was said about Medicaid is let's have something that's effective and then we can spend money on it instead of spending more money on something we know doesn't work. So with education, first thing, let's look at this. Uh, what do we want the kids to learn? What do we want them to learn at what age? When does education end? When I talk to reporters, they kind of go blank and they don't have any more questions because they've never been asked that before or told that. See, because they're used to saying, well, uh, I'm for education. I'm, and I am too. Uh, I was the first one in my family to go to high school. Mm. First one to go to college. First one to go to graduate school. Education's been wonderful for me. And I remember that day in college that suddenly it hit me. I said, I can learn anything. <laughs> I can learn anything. See, that's what we have to inspire our kids to do. That's where things happen. And my kids got that in high school. They got a little head start on me, mm. all right? Because they suddenly realized, you know, I can learn anything. In fact, my daughter, um, public schools are wonderful. They really, I, I grew up in the public schools. I did well. And, uh, um, but not everybody fits in the public school. My daughter came to me in, in her sophomore year, and she was an inter international baccalaureate, Westwood, strong school, uh, tops. Um, she came to me and said, Dad, if I find a public or a private school to go to and pay for it myself, can I go? Hmm. Did, I train, did I train did? her right? You did. You did. And a did you know job. what happened? She did it. She hmm. found a private school because, see, she played Division I soccer, so she was busy doing that. She was playing piano. And with IB at Westwood, you'd study five hours a night homework. Well, let me ask night. you this. So education's a big deal. Okay, let me ask you this. Is the cure for that to go to a private school? Uh, and allow the exodus of public schools or to fix the public schools? How do you fix a public school? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I'm not running for office. That's a, no, that's our problem. That's okay. our problem. There's a study that was so done. So you're talking about education and, and public school's fine. Yeah. I, if, if public school is fine. Public school is fine for some kids, right. but it's not for everybody. Right. So we have to identify. Maybe I'm getting into something here, but I think I am because I think it's important. And in, as, uh, as there's, a, there's, a school, there's a district in right. uh, Dallas. Sorry to interrupt it, but Go ahead. there's a district in Dallas that has charter schools. And this district, these charter schools really are public schools because they're right. funded by public right. and they have rules, all right? But they're more successful in certain ways and they're causing the public schools to be more like the charter schools because they're losing students. You see what I mean? So you don't change anything from the inside. When was the last time you saw something change from the inside? All right. They're trying to change health care through the inside. It doesn't work. It's got to come from the outside. Well, obviously, that's the, cons yeah, that's obviously the constituents are telling us, an, ex an example you cited with your daughter, you know, that public schools do not work. But as a state legislature, uh, you, you're also accountable for state funding that goes to public schools. So do we keep funding broken public schools or do we repair them? And if we do, what's your recommendation in repairing the public schools? Because even though they go to private schools, like you mentioned, the accountability of public schools doesn't who, leave who your desk. It's let still let me ask here. this. Who regulates the public school? Well, you, locally, there is some, but the funding, the funding is the one that I'm talking this, about. This is, an, this is the thing that just got passed. Uh -huh. Did you know that a school board member could not get the budget and data from the school district without going to uh, public records? 
oh, requirement. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that was going on. That See, they just, they just passed yeah. that law in this last legislature that school board could get, even get information. Oh. You see what I mean? Let you can't change it from the inside because they won't let you. Right. All but right. that's a law you could introduce to change that. I know. Yeah. That's been introduced okay. and it's already passed. Oh, okay. Well, good, good. No, those All are right. the yeah, So I a school board member can go into there and do that now. Yeah. Now I'm not saying, I'm like, again, I, words are put in my mouth sometimes is public schools work for some kids. We just have to make it available other types of schools. And I, I think the same thing with health care. We need the zero-based look at it. <clears throat> If a kid doesn't get what they need by fifth grade, it's done. They'll never get it because those are the basics. So I think I would emph I really emphasize that. So, so the time you, get you, to would, you would uh, obviously want to sit on the education committee if elected. It would I'd be happy about that. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I have a passion about it. Right. Because education has been big in my life. So. Would you require or uh, consider requiring some type of uh, a, a standard to be met before the school system got? State funding, or standard's not the right word, I guess. Uh, uh, <coughs> that the school proved to take a performance measure, measure level. Performance, measure. performance measures. Well, I was on the education, I was an education chair for the Texas Association of Business for a time many years ago. And I learned a lot. I don't know if I did much, but I learned a lot. And some of the things are, there are things we know about schools. Mm -hmm. And that is, if the school's more than 750 students in the school, you lose kids. So some of the larger schools that have several thousand in the school, they break it up into pieces so that every teacher, there's groups, and I know uh, Canyon Vista Middle School did that with my kids, is they divided it up so they had, a, so as the kids traveled, all this, they saw the same teachers, a certain group. Oh, so, good. so then the teachers would get together and say, well, Joey has this or Mary has this, that there's an issue there, see. And then they could do something to help. And I think give the teachers more time to help. Uh, again, all these regulations, I'm talking about, we need relief from regulations. Boy, do teachers <coughs> need relief from regulations. Uh, my wife is a teacher for mm. over 11 years in mm -hmm. special mm -hmm. education. Uh, she knows how to document, see. Um, and she's very good at that. Well, you got uh, an inside look at education then. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I used to go, go to school with her and help out with the kids and things like that, too, in those days. Now, your, your opponent has called you, called you a right-wing extremist. You know, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I'm conservative, all right? Um, radical. Uh, when I get interviewed by reporters, if you look in the newspapers, et cetera, they call me affable and friendly. So I think the radical extremist might be, that might be the wrong thing. But I am conservative. Right wing, I don't know. How do you define right wing? <laughs> you know? Well, <laughs> but, but anyway. Anti-left um, wing, I don't know. <laughs> it, look, my response, if I would have, <laughs> to you, would have said, well, I, Oh, you I, know. I, okay. I, I guess okay. 5,000 people love that, so hey, I am. <laughs> <laughs> It won, you know. <laughs> right, there you well, go, right? I, I got an email from uh, a friend of mine's a Democrat. I have a lot of Democrat friends. Isn't that interesting, you know? Yeah. Uh, he sends me emails from her campaign, see, that, she, that he gets in. And Is that right? Yeah, and uh, it was fun. I have it right here. And uh, No, here it is. Any of them you like to read? Yeah, I want to read one, one statement you here. You can read more than one. Um, she's not here to tell us about it. Well, again. We've she, briefly met. She may be a fine person, you know, but there's a difference is, in our politics. Oh, really she's there out of town and busy next week. So, so, it's a good so it says, uh, her opponent in the race, another extreme, I don't want to say affable, no, I bet. Um, extreme right-wing Republican with a platform. Ethical extremist. That, yeah, she didn't know. say that part, but that, anyway. Uh, described as anti-regulation, anti-tax, anti-abortion, anti-Obamacare. Well, she could be my campaign manager when you start going that direction. Well, so there is a distinct advantage. This is a battle yeah. for the hearts and minds and souls oh, yeah. of they District 50, North Travis. That's they, where it is. They can I, use I these kind of things. I can't believe anti-tax is a bad thing. Why is that a bad thing? You know? Yeah, well, Maybe there are some things they, they want to... I'll have to go back it, to I years ago so. when uh, uh, Dr. Donna Campbell was on this show and running for Congress. Mm -hmm. And everything she said sounded great to me, but Congressman Doggett got it. I can't take the show <coughs> and take pieces of it up and made an attack ad on her out of it. Mm. And it was effective. That's why you don't want to come on your show no more. Uh, well, that other reason. Is yeah. guilty? No. Hey, I got <laughs> a picture. Anybody wants to send it to me. Out there at the flood. 
<laughs> it's like, what are you doing? I'm going to get a picture of Cabo. Well, he's always been a, a political enemy of El Concilio. Uh, he's a political animal. And uh, very, he survived. Very, very, very vindictive. Ooh, very vindictive as an elected public official. And uh, for that, I, as a Democrat that I am, and chairman of a precinct chair of a Democrat, uh, his politics is, I mean, I, I don't see how someone like that can continue in a public office. When uh, We invited him to our Fourth of July parade. That's right. And uh, he just laughed it off, you know. But, hey, you know, elections happen every two years. And, well, that, and that's I was what happens. Say, Unfortunately, they don't have term limits in Congress. Well, I, I, I do not approve of term limits. You know. Every two years you got a chance to. Now, now he has survived how many uh, uh, ex, uh, intelligent attacks that my party has made on him. We can't get rid of him. So he must be doing, he's, he's a political animal of the, of the <coughs> sharpest kind, I guess. Anyway, we're back off of House District 50. <laughs> uh, I don't even know how we got off of all the Congressman Dog. Oh, yeah, because he used a piece of the show to make a tack ad. You're saying all that sounds good. So is this what I have to look forward to? Pretty much, because okay. everything Dr. Donna said on my show sounded great. But he was able to cut it out, you know, a piece of it here and a piece of it there. And we can't do anything about it because this is public. What, well, what you're saying here what, what might I, be... Well, what I do like about, you know, one of the things I like about Dr. Mike Van Wally is, you know, they're actually attacking him, you know, and he's... he's got he, battleground he, Texas right. against him. And Dr. Mike, Dr. Van Wally is, is a very nice guy. Uh, he's very upfront. He's very, you know, he, he talks about, you know, exactly what he believes. And he never comes off as someone that actually attacks someone else, you know. And it's, it's, it's really, it surprises me how they're actually... That may or may not be a good thing. Yeah, they're actually targeting him, you know, the way they're targeting him. <coughs> With so. this much force? Right. He seems like he's knowledgeable about what's going to cross his desk if he gets there. Sure, I hope he does. We're going to do what we can. Right. It is, it is, that's what I was really shocked, that they would have this kind of heavyweight... Uh, organizations and involved the, in the HT50 race. And the fact that they're spending this amount of money on this type Time of race, and effort. you know, because you're talking about a, you know, a race where <coughs> um, the, this part of it, you know, you're really not going to serve in office, you know, come the next election, next election. You, know, you are, you will, you know, go to the Capitol. But this one here, you're really not going to do anything. And they're spending so much money on this race and putting so much effort on it. It's all, uh, and, and, yeah, it's just, I'm surprised. I haven't seen the records. Is that it's true? Very desperate effort. I'm just surprised by it. Well, I guess my only part or comment to that is that I'm glad I'm not in District 50. <laughs> I'm not either, but. We have one from, from McAllen, Texas. That oh, that's served. right. You don't like yours, uh, Eddie, Eddie Rodriguez, is that his name? That's his name. Yeah, Ed McAllen, Texas has two representatives, the one from McAllen and the one from your district. There you go. He's uh, the, what do you call it, the carpetbagger. Mm. Uh, he does district. more for McAllen than he does for East Austin, is that what you're saying? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Um, well, I'm glad that uh, education is one of the top issues on your agenda because mm -hmm. it is something that, you know, is, is very critical to, to all communities, mm -hmm. uh, especially the funding. I went to a education reform discussion at UT, and I failed to keep the gentleman's card, the, the professor that was holding the class. And he had uh, the, uh, Kent, something from uh, the teachers' union, and then you had two other people from the national unions come speak to potential students, teachers. And their whole discussion under education reform is that they have an education reform plan. Okay, and uh, but their spill was uh, not only become a teacher, become but become a union teacher. And I said, wait Probably a minute, become an activist as well, and, and become political. No, they t they said it. You must become political in order to stop all this ludicrous thinking of uh, Ted Cruz. You must get involved politically. And I'm saying, wow, is that the education reform you're talking about? <laughs> are these the people that you're sending into our classrooms? These yeah, are young people. Too, yeah, my. You know, but uh, I asked him because, you know, I'm not going to stay away from asking questions when the opportunity comes. And no, I told you, him who I was. I never known you to do that. And uh, I, because they said among themselves, oh, we as a union, we all got together to work together so that we could, we were not competing amongst our own union for, the, for teachers. 
I said, well, in that mind th thinking, why don't y'all also get together with the charter school teachers or all the non-union teachers and see how we can best deliver quality education to our kids? Well, that was something like, you know, next, what's the next question, you know? But it was very interesting. So how can we phrase that down into a question for Dr. Mike here? Well, no, I was, just, to do, I, I, I was just mentioning that that's the kind of, of uh, Mentality. propaganda propaganda that's out there uh, at UT to, for these young students is to, re, is Starting to have young, someone re, come in and rec not only talk about education, but go further and recruit as a union teacher because supposedly we do and better. And a politically active union and teacher. And a politically uh, one. See, that's a business thing. We're forgetting the student again. I don't. That's what, what I'm saying. What does a student need to know when, how much, and when does it end? I mean, you, you, I you're not finished no. learning, are you? No. I thought that are was you? the education no. reform. No. I learned it everything. never ends. <laughs> no. So the key is getting the kids. Yeah. See, and that's left out of those conversations yeah. is, you know, what are we doing for the kids? You know, you hear that all the time. Oh. But, uh, but again, it's also families. Uh, are the parents to have no say in anything? Uh, do they not? Oh, she was influence? here. We could ask her her say it's on this. No, we can't. No. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure she, they love the, as a small business owner, the one thing that burns me up is this, uh, this Travis County uh, appraisal district. You know, I hate the fact that as a small business owner, you know, I, have to, I pay taxes when I buy something. You know, I buy a product or something like that, you know, furniture or something like that. And then once a year, I have to pay taxes on that same furniture and all those supplies again every single year. I hate that. You know, I hate that someone walks in from the Travis County Appraisal District, walks into my business, no, make no appointment whatsoever, and will look around, have no knowledge about what we do, and decide that your stuff is worth this amount and this is how much you're going to pay taxes on it this year. People don't uh, really don't understand what goes down and what happens when it comes to being a small business, you know, in this county and the different fees and the different taxes that you actually have to pay. And when this individual here, this the other opponent in this race, says that we should have a, a state income tax, she's highly misguided. We have over a million people in Travis County, over a million residents. Yeah. Out of that million, we have 600,000 registered voters. Out of 600,000, only four, only. 14% came out and voted in our last election. People need to wake up and get out and I go remember. vote. Wake up and get out and go vote. Yeah, we got about eight minutes. Uh, well, let's repeat those voting dates so make sure people can write them down. We got to go over and take more voting. Yeah, you we got to. You want to remind folks what voting, the, the voting, the election early day. vote day? Absolutely. Um, the election day is January 28th. It's a Tuesday. We have early voting the week before. That's Monday through Friday. Um, it's going to be a vote. It's going to be a com competition for the hearts, minds, and souls of District 50. So it's important to show up. Um, Any number or website uh, you may want to mention that folks out sure there want to volunteer or, or, you know, help your campaign? Or you do not have to live in District 50 to help to get involved with that race. You can go to drmikefortexas.com, and that'll get you all your information. Drmikefortexas.com. And that All it has is, well, anyway. That will like give, and we, um, we are re-doing uh, some of the website and things of that nature to get more information. People uh, say, well, why didn't you have this and that? Well, again, my opponent's been running for a year, sometimes more. I decided mid-August. <laughs> so we've so been on a sprint a the whole time. So do you have a campaign headquarters? Yes. You address? Well, yes. Yeah. It, do you have an address for that? He has a campaign headquarters. Well, uh, or is no, it? We, there, actually, there go, it is. the best place is to go to drmikefortexas.com, and then I'll give you all the information. All the information's on there. Correct. And I've like, seen your Facebook page. Uh, and like, That's impressive. And what we stress here at this program is folks to go out and vote. Out, get Correct. involved. Yeah. Do more, more than just vote. Get involved. Go down and be a, it, a judge. And a the nonpartisan that we are for any of the campaigns, any yeah. of the candidates, the important thing is to go out, <coughs> get, involved, get involved, and vote. Because it's not going to happen at, on, on Facebook. It's going to happen at Texas yeah. State Capitol. Well, yeah. but it's more, more important it's going to happen in the ballot box. <laughs> and if you don't get to the ballot box, <laughs> <Yeah>. <coughs> everything else is wishful <laughs> thinking. <laughs> Some of these big people from Washington, D.C. will be pushing you in that ballot box. See, those votes, that. actually, you're keeping score. So there's a game going on, you right? Can, I bet you you will spend less than 20 seconds in that voting box if you go vote. You're the only ones on the ballot. That's right? it. And just walk in, in there. In the you probably spend more time going through the ID than <laughs> trying to vote. 
<laughs> there you go, my people's ID. But, I like uh, that. Well, remember that race? I remember the race that we had in, in South Travis County where you had a, a state rep elected into office with very few votes. Um, yeah. You're talking like about four votes oh, elected yeah. into office. Right. Was, so yeah. when people think that their vote does not count, they're mm. highly misguided. Mm, 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 it, that's one household decided that race. Oh, one yeah, household. Oh, so yeah. get out and vote. Please. And there'll be five days of early vote as well. If for some reason you, you're not able to vote on election day, you know, you need to take. And you, you can vote anywhere. I'm starting to like this darn, uh, you know, I, I never liked this early voting stuff. And you can vote anywhere now. You can vote anywhere. Just for me, well, it was always election days like your civic day. You, well, you that, go out there and do that's your duty. For, that's for us. Uh, Olders. Old, old school, like my nephew say. Young, young kids today, when they go vote, you've seen them, they try to trust Touch screen the no 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 we're not there yet. Still, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Twenty years ago, <laughs> I went to an election. It was about you know paper ballots etc. Oh yeah. And we got we were going out of town, so we went at nine to vote. They didn't have ballots for us. I showed up at ten. They didn't have ballots for us. I was wanting to leave town. Noon they didn't have they didn't didn't have ballots for us for that part of the district mm. until three o'clock. Oh wow. See, um, well that's it's somebody's. important to vote. And that's why I like early voting, because if that happens, I've been I go the next early day. now for the last couple well, of times. You know, if you oh, look at it, it, if you look at it, if you look at it strategically, you could win the election just during early vote. That's true. You yeah. know, if you that's really true. target, especially in a low potential. That takes all the excitement out of uh, uh, Central County. You know, no. I remember the old days going to Central County. Well, for me, or well, for a candidate, it's a big relief to see your early vote results because that's the first thing they post at 7 p.m. Yeah. And you have a thousand vote lead in the kind of low turnout this type, race. This like type of race, yeah. Hey, really could happen. You know, you start popping that uh, champagne bottle or whatever. You want to jump us out here with a minute or two? Say, say something real quick. You got uh, three minutes. All right. In um, Spanish. <laughs> you, you can take a minute or two. We do, need to, we do need to do a... I can read Spanish. I just don't okay, speak I'm it very well. That's <laughs> I thought uh, I'd throw that in. We all need a minute or two for our closing <laughs> stuff. Well, I just want to say uh, what we've been talking about is get out the vote. Uh, special election. Vote for Dr. Mike Vandewally. Um I'm the Republican candidate for District 50 House. And these are things I... I'm running for, and I want to see a relief in tax taxation. I want to see relief in obstructive regulations. I want to see relief from Obamacare and all that's around that. And I want to see relief from intrusion into our personal lives and, and freedoms. Those are two things I didn't get to, the, the obst obstructive regulations and uh, in the involvement in our personal lives. Now, that have to be for some other time with uh, two minutes left. We will be here next week with uh, Dave Nally, my anti-libertarian libertarian. libertarian. <laughs> He's a, my favorite libertarian. Uh, after that, I don't know what we have coming up. My uh, Ma's going to make me do some fun shows, probably have some music out for Christmas. Uh, we going to have Santa? No, we're taking uh, Buddy Thunderbird so again. And let's see if we can get Heffy. Yeah, get Heffy <coughs> in here. <laughs> I've been, uh, he's been some, posting uh, recently a lot on Facebook. Yeah, I like to go with a gun in it. Just hey, man, you out there, invite yeah, me. Winner. Invite me to one of those. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, let's go. <coughs> uh, yeah, we might see if we can get some retained old Christmas music on as well. Yes, sir. Because we always like to have like two or three different styles of Christmas music. All right, she doesn't like to have two or three bands because that's a lot too much work. Well, I read in the news. Your oh, one minute. I read in your news your buddy had problems getting to a concert. Oh, he, 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 he gets smoking pot and crashed the bus, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, no. Probably no, no, Willie Nelson, the everybody was. the only be. marijuana user that I know where in the city of Austin, Texas, has Wait, a street, what's, a street what's named it? after him. What's, what, 30 seconds, Dr. Mike. <laughs> uh, uh, marijuana. <laughs> if a death crossed your desk to legalize marijuana in Texas, what would you do? Light him. <laughs> You guys, guys are so bad. Those guys are so bad. Yeah, we, we'll skip that for now. 10 uh, 1, the final map's out of me December 1st. I live in District 3. I've been in this same district, ain't District 2. District 2? Dove Springs District. Uh, yeah, it'll be another Hispanic district. Five seconds anyway. Say I, something, Mike. I live in District 50. I'm voting for Dr. Mike Vanderwally. Yeah. Later on, folks. Bye bye. That's been just a time, didn't it?